And I think this is also the problem with NFTs because they've been given such a technical term. People now feel that they need to understand the technicalities of it. And it's the same with blockchain. People feel they need to understand how blockchain works in every form of its ability, like you're a technical expert for you to get into blockchain. But as I said, I, I don't know anything about how a car works, but I know I drive a car. I don't know how a an aeroplane works, but I go on an aeroplane. I don't know all of the technology, but I use it. Let's talk first of all about um, how somebody goes from working in a financial services industry and then moves into art. How did that transition take place? You know, they, they talk a lot about when people get old and they're in the old people's home and they have a life of regret and they're like, I wish I should have I lived a life that was more true to who I am. Did you just have that moment much earlier? Yes. Yeah. And that's the best way to put it. So, you know, after working, you know, in some of the world's largest financial organizations for a very long time, I was a corporate and I felt that I just needed to go, uh, first of all, from the corporate world to a more of an entrepreneurial world. So I think that's a familiar feeling with a lot of people within the corporate world, always like this burning desire to, to, to be an entrepreneur, which you talk a lot about within in your other podcasts of like, you know, how do you make that shift and that kind of the fear that you're walking away from like a stable salary to go into an entrepreneurial world. So I was, that was what was first calling me, if I was honest. Then when I had that time to kind of figure out and understand where I was going, then my voice came. And I think that's why, you know, then I created Voice No Art. And not everybody has it. And I, I'm very, very grateful and lucky to have felt I kind of tuned into the universe enough to feel and hear my own voice so that I was being able to be authentic to myself and go back to a creative side that I had really kind of quashed I would say in my teen teen years and early 20s mm. and I think I'm just really grateful that I was able to re-tap into that creativity. Gosh only, only knows if you hadn't you, you could have been stuck into the world you were stuck in and get to that point it's really good that you were able to do that it, it, but it must have been a brave decision I know that, that, that you would have been led with your heart but it must have been brave because when you know what you know for so long to yeah. walk away from that security and that that kind of like the, it, it's subconscious behavior and experiences into something new that you don't know what the outcome's going to be. You don't know, you, you know, you don't know what the future holds. Yeah. Were you scared? Yes. And there were a lot of naysayers, right? And so what I kind of did is that for a long time, I kept it both very separate, right? So I would be doing my art and my the people that I was kind of creating my art world, I would never even tell them that I was in finance. And then to my financial clients, I would never say that, by the way, I'm doing like this side hustle on my art side, because I thought it, it was too confusing an identity. Mm -hmm. And I think that where I also believe that careers have changed, a career mindset has changed is that Back in the day, you were like, that's what you are. You're a financial advisor. You are a doctor. You're a lawyer, whatever the case is. And it was almost too confusing for people. That's your brand identity. And I think that what I learned over time was just like, you know what? I was hiding it. I got to the point where I just started owning it and saying, yeah, I do both. Yes, it's a bit weird that I'm a financial advisor and an artist because also from a right, right left, right, people just don't understand that. And mm -hmm. I do... There is a massive part of my personality that I can be extremely serious and focused. And then there's this massive part that I can just like, literally, you cannot stop me creative. Makes you unusual. Yeah. But honestly, it does make you unusual because most people don't, aren't able to facilitate both parts within their brain. So it does make you unusual. And, and whether it's the word unusual or gifted, let's say, that's a nicer word, isn't it? <laughs> makes you a bit gifted to be able to do that. Okay, so tell me about what happens. So you, leave the, you leave the corporate world and you start going into this new art world. You're thinking about entrepreneurialism, but you're thinking about art. Art has got nothing to do, for most people, with non-fungible tokens. <laughs> exactly. Okay, it's just art. And whether that's painting or pottery or sculpture, you know, it's creativity in a different way. So how did you, how did you marry the two together? So, I mean, what happened was, is that, you know, I, when I created my voice note art, what was interesting is that I actually created it digitally originally. So before I, even I knew about NFTs, all of that, I created digital art. 
So obviously, because I use quite a few tech pieces to get the shape of the sound wave, and then I actually draw it digitally. Um, and when I, but obviously back in the day before NFTs, the problem with digital art is that the minute you create a digital art piece, it it can be reproduced like gazillion times, right? Endless, infinite amount of times. So how do you then, you know, you know, monetize that piece, right? So you're not just going to create a piece and then just put it out for people to enjoy. You want to also, you know, like because I come from the financial world, I don't mind, you know, a lot of artists get so scared talking about money, but actually as an artist, that's your career. You need to find ways of how to make money from your you career. It's, your not, product, yeah. it's, it's not a bad word, but in the you see what I also found very interesting is when I moved from the finance to the art world, it was almost like if you mentioned money, everyone was like, oh my God, she just talked about money. I'm like, no, that, that I don't, <laughs> that's normal, isn't it? I've worked with so many other people from, because obviously as a financial advisor, you work with so many different people in every sector. Yeah. But I was finding it so weird that art is one area where people were not allowed to talk about money. Let me, let me take you back to being an entrepreneur, because yeah. this is a kind of like the beginning of the journey of coming out of the corporate world. You may have seen that I interviewed uh, Vignesh Metakovin recently Amazing. on my podcast, and he obviously purchased the most expensive piece of digital art at $69 million um, just a few months ago. When you see that, or maybe you can speak for, for most artists, mm. when an artist sees that, does that all of a sudden signal a game changer? And everyone go, holy macaroni. <laughs> what's going on here yeah is it can can you tell me what you think yeah about definitely first of all you know i love meta and i think he's a rock star and and i do love the fact that you know he's come from you know an indian background and he's also changing the narrative and telling a new story on that but secondly the narrative that he changed the what he did by buying that piece for 69 million dollars um, with him and Beeple, who well, I bought obviously from Beeple, mm -hmm. um, is that he did change the game and he did write a new narrative. He started the new narrative for digital art. Mm -hmm. We live in a world where we are we decide our content. Obviously, it's we're based on algorithm, but there's a lot of the time it's pull, you know, pull information. You needed he needed to do something that created a holy macaroni. Um, you know, point of view where everyone's like, okay, what is this? And yes, $69 million, you know, tapping into the physical world of Christie's as well, you know, getting that there, that was the way to push information out because NFTs, the crypto market, what's been happening in the space has been happening for many years. But because this is happening in the virtual world, how do you push that information to the physical world to start to change, you know, change their paradigm, change the way they think. And I think it was, I know a lot of people focus on the money, but on this, I would say you have to focus on what change they're trying to bring about or the change he was trying to bring about. It's like, it's yeah. almost it's like starting a new market almost, isn't it? It's like until somebody buys a stock, nobody buys a stock. Until somebody buys a car, nobody buys a car. So I suppose that was him, you know, putting the, put the, the, the flag in the ground to say, this is a real thing Completely. that you can pay for with real money. And then, you know, it's cutting the ribbon. The market's now open type yes. of thing. If you've enjoyed this episode, then click over here where you can get more episodes or alternatively, you can click over there and subscribe, press the bell button to get your notifications going. So every single time we produce content, you see it first. I'll see you on the next episode.